Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday night edition of Ask Us Anything. We are Mike and Jennifer Wendland, and we're coming to you live from snowy Michigan. There's a virtual blizzard going on outside the RV tonight. I and, guess it's uh, appropriate to say it's pretty cool out there. It's pretty cool out there. It is. Uh, yeah, it really, it's really coming down. We are back in Michigan after a ton of traveling this month, and we're only here for a couple of weeks. Uh, I know we missed last week because of the Super Bowl. We got lots to tell you about. Uh, lots of you are in the chat, and we're excited to see that. Even a couple of you with uh, sent in Super Chats, which we really appreciate. So here's the big thing that we're celebrating. We are celebrating, okay. as of right now, we have 90, well, let me do a refresh. We have 99,900 and, whoop, it's refreshing. I better do it in another thing because we're going on live and it'll probably do it. 99,906 subscribers to this YouTube channel. We are just less, almost, there's Bo, by the way. Bo says hello. <laughs> yeah. Bo is excited. Can you see how excited he is tonight? Can you tell him, Bo? Tell him. Yeah. Bo says, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we want to tell you how to do that, and it's uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I gotta just bring it up now because I just uh, erased something that we had, and let's see here how I can uh, how I can do this. Um, uh, there we go. Okay. No, that's not what we want. Now I I've got all excited about it. Why don't you tell them about? We're trying to get everybody we know to uh, to sign up right now as we're, we're working because on Because before this hour ends, we would like 94 people to sign, 94 more people to subscribe so that we can reach 100,000. And if you look right there, that is how you subscribe. If you just uh, enter that in your browser and uh, tell your Be friends and uh, subscribe. And uh, we are really excited about this. We've been watching this all week. And uh, we'll kind of share with you the results, but we're, we're uh, 99,906. So we need... Uh, 94. 90, thank you for doing that <laughs> for me. <laughs> 94 more. So um, a couple of things. As you ask us questions tonight, would you type question all in caps before you ask the question? And that way, as I'm trying to scroll down this long, long list of, uh, of questions and comments... I'll know what's a question. When you have a comment, type in comment. Uh, lots of you jump in and just say hi, and we appreciate all of that. Um, but let's start off with number one on our list tonight is from Davis, Tandy, and Buster. Are you really going to donate the bed set? Maybe the <laughs> owner would want it. If you had the RV version of Elvis and Priscilla stay in your RV, uh, I guess that's us. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't you want to keep it? Well, we did leave that with uh, the person that we bought the RV, that we borrowed the RV in, and uh, I don't know whether they're going to donate it to a charity. They have uh, all the bedding they would need for their own RV, but uh, we did leave it with them. Uh, if you don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about the video that went up yesterday on our uh, trip to Quartzside, where we borrowed an RV from a friend, and uh, we didn't uh, have any of the gear. We had because we flew off. out there. We flew out. We uh, couldn't take much. I took a couple bath towels, a couple hand towels that were rather old, and I planned on getting rid of those. But rather than have an extra suitcase that's $30 each way, $60, to take our own sleeping bag, which would have been a thousand times better than the real cheap set that I bought. So but, uh, if you watch that video, <clears throat> you can see it all. Um, we are coming to you from the RV. If there's a little noise, that's the heater. As I, as I told you, there's a blizzard going on outside here in Michigan right now. Uh, it's a short, it's supposed to quit in, by 10 o'clock Eastern time. So, uh, but it, it was... It's uh, very pretty. Very pretty, but the roads are pretty the, tough. The so. roads are tough. And you know us, we always come in the RV to, uh, to do the story. So I'm going to leave that subscribe button up there for everybody, and uh, we'll kind of check in. We were really hoping, wouldn't it be great to hit that 100,000 mark tonight while we are on the air? So if you have not subscribed, uh, that's how you do it. Just go to that link and hit subscribe. If you have some friends in the RV lifestyle, send them that link and ask them to help us get over that 100,000 mark tonight. Uh, 99,000, I don't know if that'll show, 913 uh, right now are the, is how many we have uh, signed up. So it's growing. 
Um, we've got less than 90 to go now, 87 to go, and uh, we can do this. 237 of you are watching us live right now, and uh, I see about 58 of you have given us thumbs up. We appreciate those thumbs up. That uh, That's great. Um, but what we'd really appreciate tonight is if you guys would uh, would uh, get us over that 100,000 mark. That would be so cool. We really uh, are that excited about it. That would be cool. Um, so more questions. Lots of you jumping in. Uh, we'll just do the first couple. E squared, snowy Michigan. Uh, where are you? We are in Michigan, and uh, we're coming to you uh, tonight from uh, Oakland, Michigan. That's where we are tonight. Uh, and as I said, we're, we're live. Linda Ward is in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Here's a question from Cattle Dog Cruising. Based on your experiences, what state should be on every RVer's must-see list? And since I'm a Florida resident, not Florida. Utah. Utah. I agree. We are in 100% agree, agreement. Utah should be on everybody's list. Um, just this great circle tour of all the national parks in Utah. We have a book on it that you can find in our, our books. There's a link to, uh, I should probably bring that down a little bit, but uh, we have a, a book. I'll put that right down there. Put it right in the middle. I'll put it right in the middle. <laughs> uh, that's how you can find it. We have a, a seven day travel adventure guide to Utah. That's one of our adventure guide books. You can see that there. Uh, but Utah would be on our list of that. And then, here's a question from Kay who wants to know, um, what is your <clears throat> favorite national and or state park? Well, I always say Yellowstone because Yellowstone, there's no place like Yellowstone anywhere on earth except our Yellowstone. And everybody needs to go see it. I think I would agree. It's a national park that's probably our favorite. It's uh, the first big one we went to when we started this. Uh, we're, we're about to hit our eight-year anniversary on the road starting our ninth, and Yellowstone was the first, and we love it. We first go back every year, we sometimes to. a couple of times a year. So Yellowstone, Glacier probably is number two, and there's some that we uh, also we like. In terms of state parks, gosh, on the east, I think Letchworth State Park in New York. Yeah. That's a, it's a beautiful waterfall. They call that the Grand Canyon of the east, Letchworth State Park in New York. And in the west, back to Utah, um, uh, now I think the one we uh, found this year, Dead Horse Canyon State mm, Park. That was uh, nice. Spectacular. So uh, we've written about all these either on the blog or here with you, with videos on the YouTube channel. So uh, it's all it's all there. Um, we are so excited uh, about uh, being able to, as Chris Colley, Chris uh, is part of our uh, RV Lifestyle team, and as we're about to hit that 100K mark, it's a big deal in the YouTube world to hit 100,000. You get an award. We're thinking we're going to put it up right there when we get it. And uh, we've worked really hard. It's been on our goals. You know, we've got a, in the, in our house, we have a little clock that counts down. Uh, we were going to bring it out here. We didn't have time to get it out here. Um, but we're really close uh, to that mark. So that's why we're, we're leaving that up there. And uh, where are we right now? Let's see. Uh, tonight, right now, we're up to 922. Woo. 99, 922. That's pretty great, man. That's, uh, uh, what is that, 78? Mm -hmm. uh, 78 away. Can we get 78 more subscriptions? We would love to celebrate that going live here tonight. Alan Washington in West Virginia. Uh, Chris says, if you know anybody who loves RVing and wants to know about the lifestyle... Have them sign up on the channel, and there's that link. Thank you, Chris. We love, love that. Uh, we love that. Here's a question from Ernie from Flagstaff, Arizona. We've seen lots of RVs with rope lights and have heard of using Irish Spring. Now we're seeing keeping the hood open. Does any of that actually work for rodent prevention? I don't know. You know, they say put Irish Spring. They say put... Uh, mothballs in there that would stink up your RV. Some of them say put those, what are those things you put in the dryer? Those dryer cloths? Oh, yeah. Those the fabric softener. Fabric softener cloths in. I There's, think you could go online and just see what yeah, they say. I, I don't know what works for mice. I don't know anything about the rope like to Irish Spring. Your mice would smell nice, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Not a lot works. Everybody has a lot of, you know, old wives' Get tales. Get yourself a cat. Things. Get yourself a cat. That would probably be the best thing and let the cat hang out in the RV uh, from time to time. You know, the best bet is to go underneath your RV, 
uh, or hire somebody to go underneath your RV and seal up even the tiniest little holes. Uh, we have seen the damage that they have done, that mice and rodent infestations have done, and it's significant. Uh, so you do want to pay attention if you keep your RV and you don't use it a lot and it's in an area because the mice will get in. Question for Jennifer from Anna. Uh -oh. Which model, nano, micro, etc., of Patagonia is your new jacket? It looks good on you. I bet that was the, yeah, that was the, the, that was the gray one. That, um, do I, I say where I got it? Yeah, that was a leisure travel van. Leisure one. travel van jacket. So you're going to have to ask leisure travel van I think, that. I think if you go to leisuretravelvan.com they sell, them. They slash sell a whole shop, line of clothing. Slash shop, you'll find it there. Yeah, I, I have a gray shirt from Leisure Travel Van. I like it because most of their things don't, they just have their triple E emblem. It's not it, that one does, it does say it doesn't no, the say the jacket the, you know. just has the triple E yeah. emblem. Yep. The shirt has uh, leisure on. Yeah. Uh, so leisure travel van slash shop, I think. Is and, and it's is. and it's kind of funny wearing that shirt because when we were at that resort the other day, we we're checking in. Some person said to me, "Do you work for leisure?" And I said, "No, no. we own one." And then we talked, and uh, he told me what he owned, and it, yep. it opens the door to conversation. Yep, yep. But you did look good, man. I like that. You can see that in that video that we just put up yesterday on our trip to Quartzsite. Uh, Jeanette, we just bought a Elysia Travel Van. How hard is it to take the Murphy bed, that's right there, up and down? Really simple. Uh, just look on our videos. We got a video that shows how we do it, and it takes all of 30 seconds. Well, can I tell them the pillow, about pillows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell them about okay. pillows. Pillows. I'll check we our watch, count while you're We watch that. Dean put the Murphy bed up, and he goes, whoop. He put it up, and ours doesn't go up quite as quickly. Well, anyway, we're bringing it down, and I said, Mike, what happened to the pillows? There's no pillows, you know. I'm like, what happened? They fell down in the crack. And I asked Dean about this. Next time I saw him, I said, you know, what, you know. And you have to do it quickly. So if you're not real quick, the pillows can go down in the track, in the crack that they have there. So I've got a, you know, a cover for the pillows, and I, I leave our pillows out because when we're driving along, I like to lay down and rest anyway, or one of us is likes to lay down and Back I leave there. the pillows out. We've Back got two there. sofas. So I, I don't put the pillows in there. Actually, <laughs> it's me. back that way. Yeah, okay. is where it is. <laughs> back. Back there is where I like to rest on. <laughs> can you see right in there? It's uh, I don't have the light on, but I should go put the light on and they can see it. But if you want to see it later on, I'll, I'll tell me and we'll go put it on for you. Um, all right. Uh, Anna, is the gas diesel in the vehicle gas tank included in the OCC, that's the uh, maximum uh, occupied cargo containing, I don't know, whatever that stands for, but how much it weighs. Yes, it does. Uh, if you add that up, that, that goes into it. everything. Vehicles, weight, stuff you take, that's what you want to know about. Um, Edward Varga noting a lot of early starters here, hungry for information. And Ed passes along birthday blessings to Mike and Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday was my birthday. That's why this is the best birthday present we could get if you subscribe. And Jennifer's is Wednesday. Wednesday. So we have our birthdays, uh, the 8th, mine, and the 12th. And it works bride's. out really well because that way he doesn't forget. I don't forget. How could I forget? Because we're only four days apart and you're first. That's right. But I, I would remember anyway. Uh, so check out our video. We haven't talked to you about Arizona. We had a, a fantastic time. The last we did a live shot, we thought we were going to go up to Lake Superior the Lake Superior? Yes, the Lake oh, yeah, Superior that's right. and the yeah. ice caves. Yeah. But we figured it's winter. We've seen a lot of winter. We just did a winter camp out. We just did a video on it. Do we really want to go up and be, be cold again for a while? And it's still cold here near our home. Um, so we thought of that. Then we thought of going to Hawaii. We've been invited to go out to Hawaii and borrow a van from somebody who had, rents them out there and to camp through Hawaii. But we only had a week free in our schedule with some stuff that we have to do. So that and it's didn't really work. hard to leave Bo. We feel guilty when yep. we leave him longer than a week. So we uh, basically said, well, what if we go? Because we knew the big crowds in Quartzsite had left. Uh, they end at the at the end of January. It, it really drops down. It's like 150,000 people out there in January. So. What a town of like 3,000. A town of 3,000. Yeah. You know, they camp in the desert, you know, boondocking. So we said, let's go to Arizona. We checked. We had frequent flyers that we that we could cash in. So we cashed that, flew out there, 
and we called a friend and said, hey, are you using your RV? Well, we knew our friend wasn't, and uh, would you let us borrow it? And uh, graciously, the friend let us borrow it, and um, we flew out there, went to Walmart, got some le some bedded linen. We didn't want to stay in the, their bedded bed, bed and linen stuff like that, so we got our own. And uh, a broom. <laughs> you can see the video. We put a video up. We had a ball. That's what I want to tell you. And we'll have another video on a different part of the desert that we camped at after Quartzsite. That'll be coming up next, next week. Next week is going to be really, really, really good. And uh, and we did, and then we then we went to an RV kind of a business event down in Tucson for a few days as well. So, um, but we had a great time in, in Arizona. Love Arizona, and so much so we would love to go back in in the spring and spend maybe a month there in our own RV. So, uh, but please check out that video if you haven't. As you subscribe, if you're just tuning in. And I know there's a lot of you uh, that are coming in now. There's 335 of you watching us live. Um, if you're just tuning in, we are this close to uh, 100,000 mark. And we have asked everybody to call their friends, say, hey, subscribe to the channel. And what did we start off with uh, tonight when we first well, we started? We were 906. 906. Well, we're 99,932 right now. That's our count. 99,932. Right. So we need 68, 68. more. Will you guys do that for us? We'd that like you to awesome. do that in the next yeah, couple please. minutes. It'd be a great way to celebrate. Yeah, that'd be a more. great birthday present. Yeah. All right, uh, back to your questions. Uh, Jeffrey Vicker, Vickery, we just purchased our first RV. Ever seen a Lazy Boy type rocker installed? I'd take out the dinette to make room for it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we've seen them in um, fifth wheels. We've seen them in Class A's. Uh, I don't think you'd see one in a Class C, which this vehicle is. Or certainly not a Class B, but in a fifth wheel, a toy hauler, a large travel trailer, um, yeah, they're they're quite common. I don't know if they're that exact brand, but that type, Lazy Boy type, are quite common, right? We mm -hmm. see it all the time. Um, let's see, lots of you saying happy birthday. Thank um, you. Here's uh, Greg Martin in beautiful Naples, Florida. Leslie and I met you at the Tampa RV Show. Looking forward to a possible meetup. We hope to get down to Naples in just a couple of weeks. Uh, we're probably here in Michigan this coming week, and then sometime mid the following week, we're heading off that direction. Uh, we'll spend a little time in Georgia, and then we'll be down in Florida. And, and uh, Greg, we hope we can do it. If we're uh, near the Naples area, it would be in mid-February, mid-late February, we would try and do a meet and greet if we can uh, figure out uh, when we'll be there. And we'll announce that everywhere. I know there's a lot of snowbirds, and it would be fun to, to see everybody. Um, all right, I'm looking for questions and uh, lots of it. Don't forget to type in question, as Phyllis says, and comment. So as we drop, as we look down the list, we can see uh, where where we are. Lots of you saying hi, and it's always fun to see those hellos. But I'm I'm looking here for questions. And, um, gosh, everybody's just talking. There was a question up there. Was where? Oh, question. Okay, put it in caps. It makes it easier to find. Here's Paul's. How do you compare sleeping in the fixed bed in the borrowed RV to your Murphy bed in the LTV? Well, actually, there wasn't a difference. Because there wasn't any difference. Explain how that, that, that the, it, was, it was a fixed okay. bed, but. It was a bed that folded like in half. The mattress did. So, basically, it's the same thing as a Murphy bed because our Murphy bed the last couple of feet fold up. So they both were thick mattresses. They're basically the same. Yeah. Um, the, the unit we had, which was uh, our friend's unit, is a Winnebago Vita. And the whole driver's side length from behind the cab on is a slide out. And so there was a little permanent dinette that slid out. So you had more room in, in the galley. And then the back bedroom, the bed slid out. But when it was all um, pushed in, the you know the slide was in. The it's bed felt fold, folded Pretty over like that. Half, so you it? just take the mattress and fold over. So it's kind of like the same thing. When you push it out, you had to push the mattress down. Well, with a Murphy bed, you just bring this down. So it was uh, it was pretty much uh, pretty much the same thing. Same. Uh, uh, okay, this is a okay. okay. Um, here's one from Gareth Jones. Uh, do you, you both are the reason we bought a 1996 road track uh, back when we had road tracks in our Class B days. The question is, do you ever use a mosquito dining tent? 
We should. That, yeah, we, we really should. should. Yeah, I think that would be a really good investment. There are several good ones out there. I can't remember the names of them, but um, I think that, that, that will go on our list and we will probably pick up one. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to put your picnic table in that in, in uh, the spring and summer, particularly in the northern climates where the mosquitoes are oh, carry make, you up away. For, make up for all those. Yeah, that's why we don't go to the upper right? peninsula in the summer, the black flies and the mosquitoes. Rose says, hey, Mike and Jen, do you happen to have a name for your rig? We, we didn't name this one. We didn't. I don't know. Should we? Nah, I don't know. We just, the last one we did, we called it Major, Mike and Jennifer's Other Residence. We actually ran kind of a contest yeah. out here, and you all suggested that was the winner. Uh, I don't know if, if we, we just call it the RV. Yep, it's just the RV. And we say, hey, Bo, you want to go in the RV? And Bo jumps right up, and, and he likes it. So I don't know. Uh we had a bad experience in naming that. That's when we had a big wrap on it, too. Oh, we had a big wrap. We only owned that. We only used that one for, what, two months? Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of work setting yeah. up a rig. Um, I mean, it sounds simple, but it really is. Everything has to find its place. And Here's a nice note from Debbie work. Jones. Uh, she says, uh, we really enjoy you. You are inspiration, Jen. I just wondered if you had any advice as to what to do with our old road trek curtains that are in a desperate need of an upgrade. Hmm. Make some new ones. Yeah. You'll have to go to a place where they do that sort of work, find some, a seamstress. You could, you know, road trek is back in business. So you yeah, could call contact road them. trek and contact them. Uh, the, I doubt the whether they have that them that they in had on the road trek were too thin. Were way too thin. Yeah. You needed a heavier material. Yeah. Um, if you do get new curtains, I would urge you to get blackout curtains. So yes, thicker definitely. curtains anyway. Because they were very, very thin. They were not thick enough. Yep. Uh, yep. That's good. All right. It's time to check because we reach towards and that. And actually in our leisure travel van, I mean, the, the wraparound, we have a curtain for the front window. But we have we have shades. 99,939. We're almost just 60 away. Six zero, sixty one 61 away. That's how many subscribers we have. We could just make this a telethon and just stay on until we get to 100K, but my battery will die on the heart. Oh, come on, guys. We, we need to do this in another 40 minutes. Help us out. Uh, help us get to that 100K mark. I hear, oh, that's that's somebody who bought a book. <laughs> that thing there. Do you think he's a bit compulsive? I am a bit. Uh, Linda wants to know, will you sing when you hit it? <laughs> That'll end the program quick, we'll won't it? celebration. Yeah, we'll just, think, yeah. yeah, thinking that, you know, yeah. we don't have any little cans or anything uh, to come Phyllis down. Phyllis Carr, who is also part of our RV Lifestyle team, says, click the thumbs up icon at the bottom of the video. So that will tell YouTube to tell other people to come watch and subscribe. So hit the thumbs up button. Thank you, Phyllis, for reminding everybody of that. We're all rooting to do it during the live show program. Yeah, since we missed your birthday yesterday. We did. I was hoping it would be on my birthday, but uh, I'll take this You'll as take our today. birthday if we can get it. Yeah. Uh, First Motor Home says, would you guys ever consider a motor home holiday in the UK? We would. Boy, I, yeah, I really... We love the UK. Yeah, we really do. Uh, yeah, I would not, sh you know, uh, to ship it over and... We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that, but we'd rent one. And yeah. rent one of those Heimers. So I love those Heimers. Heimer Class C's. Oh my gosh! Yeah, beautiful. I would never yeah. ship ours over, but I think running one something there would be so, great. So, so absolutely, we would consider doing that. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, Joe Bailey, are you going to attend the Our Village Rally this week in Live Oak, Florida? What's your opinion of Our Village? It's going to be our first time at an RV rally, and didn't know what to expect. Joe, a lot of our friends are going um, at this business conference we are at in Tucson. Uh, many of them were headed down to the Our Village. Uh, I'm not real familiar with our village. When they first started, they reached out to us uh, to get involved, and it just didn't seem like a good fit at that time. We were doing lots of our own gatherings, and and um, it just it, it was just not there. Since then, I think they have streamlined their model a little bit, and it's become a pretty social group. So uh, let me know what you think. I don't have enough to recommend it. We are not a part of it. Um, if we were in Florida right now, maybe we would go, but uh, right. we haven't heard from them. They haven't. They've. They've not contacted us about anything, and uh, we really just don't know much about it. So, um, so there you go. Um, 
KK Kayak, I enjoy your show and the beautiful snowstorm in Wisconsin. Well, we're getting one in Michigan today, too, so it's uh, it's coming across. Uh, question, I've had squirrels chew the wiring harness twice Ooh. in my engine of my B-Class van. I'm desperate for suggestions. I can't afford replacing the wiring harness. Well, we could rent you out wow. Bo. Bo hunts, watch this. Let's see Bo. Bo? Hey, Bo, squirrel. Hey, Bo. Where's squirrel? squirrel? Where's the squirrel? Squirrel. You going to get the squirrel? Oh, he's got a choke bowl. He, wants, a drink? A, he huh? wants those squirrels. And uh, Bo lives to hunt squirrels. I don't mean to be silly because this is a really big problem. So who else did we know? Oh, um, at our winter camp out, uh, one of our members was headed up to the camp out and her thing stopped running. And she had it towed in. Her uh, RV stopped running. And it turned out squirrels had done the same with her. So... Uh, yeah, it is tough. It is tough. You've got to uh, really take a, take a look at your right. RV. You so open the hood, look under there a lot. Even though you store it and you don't think you're using it, make sure because those crit critters will okay. go inside. So the it. manufacturers, could they wrap all the wires better? Well, I think the squirrels can't? would get into it one way or another. Because, uh, I mean, this happens all the time. Squirrels and mice. Question, how often do you encounter wildlife at your campsite? The heater went off. He just really does a nice job. It means it's 70 degrees, 72 degrees in here, actually. How often do you encounter wildlife at your campsite? Um, quite often. Often. We tend to be boondockers, and uh, we would probably encounter them more often than not, but we have um, a, a, a great watchdog, and he hears any deer or oh, critter that walks Speaking of watchdogs, he woke me up twice last night, three and then again at five, because we had a lot of deer by our home. And they're walking between our house and the neighbors, the deer. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he. I was happy we didn't see any wildlife in Arizona because the snakes and the scorpions <laughs> and all, all those sleeping. little guys were sleeping. Yeah, they were. They were sleeping. And but, I would be apprehensive about taking my dog there. You know, I was talking to. Uh, uh, we did it, one of the interviews we did last week with some folks from uh, the Escapers Club, which is which is the RV group I do recommend people belong to. If you go to rvlifestyle.com slash escapers, you can, you can join and learn more about it. Um, but they have a, a new, we'll be interviewing them on the podcast and uh, YouTube. They have a new uh, boondocking policy, which is really good. And one of the things they talk about is not feeding wildlife. And uh, that goes for birds and hummingbirds and, you know, squirrels or bunnies and, of course, deer, things like that, because these animals will get used to people real quick. And uh, once they're habituated to people, they become dangerous. They become dependent on that food. Even hummingbirds. You know, we'd love to have hummingbirds on your window. But when you leave after you know, or when a bunch of RVers who do that leave and there's nobody there, then these birds, they don't know how to fend for themselves. How about so, the coyote? Uh, yeah. We talked to a guy who last week who says that he uh, he lives out in the desert and he feeds his coyotes. They come on his, he said he's even, they even let him pet him, which I found hard to believe. But he said that if you feed they him. Then, he has a screened-in porch and they come in his screened-in porch. He lets them in their screened-in porch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So I, um, we love wildlife. We love to see him. I used to carry a trail cam with us and, and uh, it was kind of fun. Um, but with Bo, uh, nothing really gets too close. Uh, Richard has a question about a gold zero 1000 for a class B to run refrigerator freezer. I'm not sure the question that you're asking, Richard. Um, I don't know that brand. Is that, I know a lot of people are putting in um, residential type uh, refrigerators in their RVs. And then they're wondering why they have no battery power when they go out boondocking. Uh, the unit we had last night that we borrowed from last week from our friend had a residential style refrigerator in it, and um, it had a very small inverter, and that inverter could only run the TV and the refrigerator. So we had to turn the inverter off every night. Uh, I used a CPAP machine. I couldn't use that because uh, the refrigerator, when it's on, and you do need the refrigerator on for your food, um, you know, we prioritize that refrigerator and it takes up over all. your life. Yeah, over your <laughs> life. But it prioritized, we prioritized, you know, we turned it off at night and we turned the inverter off and then, you know, figuring that was fine. Then we'd turn it on in the morning and run the generator. But 
they they have to run on AC, and maybe there's some that'll run on uh, DC as well, 12 volts. But uh, uh, I would not have a residential one because we do too much boondocking. If you camp in a campsite where you're always plugged in, it's not a problem. I don't know whether the Gold Zero 1000 is a residential style AC only refrigerator, but uh, the one we have now in this unit is a three-way. It's both uh, LP, propane, uh, it is DC, 12 volts DC, or it is uh, it is AC when you're plugged in or if you're running off the inverter. Uh, and it doesn't take up all that space. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Jennifer, love the style of your blue parka that you used in your winter camping trips. Can you tell me who makes it and the style name? Uh, it is from Land's... Lands End. Lands End. Uh, we got, I think this shirt I have as well. Oh, you're gonna have to. This, no, 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 oh, no, that's, no my, that's... that's my motor. I have, yeah, uh, Lands End, and uh, we don't sell them. We ordered it. We did put our logo on it, and uh, that's where the Weather Channel gets their jackets. Yes, and it turns that out blue, it's that's weather. They call it Weather blue. Channel Blue, which happens to be. I mean, we had no, we didn't plan it, but that's the kind of the color of our of our logo uh, for RV Lifestyle. So we got it from them. It's their, um, I think it's... Uh, if you get one of their catalogs, yeah, you just, if go, you just go to Land's End, you can see you it. You can see it. Or send me a note, mike at rvlifestyle.com. I'll send you a link to uh, to whatever model it is. But you, you can just look for parkas and you'll see it. It comes in different colors as well. And I think that blue is very pretty. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a nice one. Uh, question, traveling to Central Texas with my travel trailer, any input on what to expect about that time of year? Spring break? What time of year? It doesn't say. <laughs> Driving to Central Texas, I have no idea at that time of year. It gets real warm well, probably in Texas now. Uh, from about, uh, you know, April, end of April to um, right on through. When were we there? We were there blue bonnet time. We were in the hill country year before last, mm -hmm. and it was pretty hot. Pleasant. It would, you know, it was pretty hot. Remember, we had, we had bow then. Yeah. And it was it was very hot. The snakes were out. Um, so I don't know what time you're going. You didn't. You just said you're going. I think it's going to be soon. I yeah. would say. But anytime after April, it gets very warm. You know, March can be kind of cool, but usually pleasant in Central Texas. And then we were told to look out for spring break. Yeah. <laughs> um, Muriel, uh, do you have a favorite lightweight travel trailer you could recommend? The ones we like are Lance L A N. CE. Uh, we like the Lance camper van, the, you know, the camper part that goes on top of the truck. Mm -hmm. uh, they're on our video about the Tampa RV show. But Lance also makes a really nice um, travel trailer. And then we just were in a, new, a travel trailer, one of the couples we interviewed down in oh, Arizona last yes. week. I can't remember the brand. We'll have to Smaller tell everybody brand. next week. It's heavy, but boy, was that well made. Yeah, it wasn't. But that's real, not lightweight. It wasn't real lightweight. Because if you've got well a smaller just, car and you need it lightweight, it yeah. wouldn't work. But but, it was but really look at Lance. Cool. Start with Lance. Lance, I think, is is pretty good. Uh, I would recommend a Lance trailer or a Lance camper van over just about any other brand out there, including Airstream for sure. Uh, hey, Chris is reminding everybody, and I gotta keep saying it because now we have 436 of you watching this live. Right up there, we have a. That's how to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle Channel, and we've been talking all night long. We are this close to our goal of a hundred thousand subscribers. We could do it tonight if those of you who have not subscribed would just do us the honor and and sign up. We started the night. We were at four nine oh six nine oh six and. Uh, what the heck? We dropped. <laughs> we dropped. I don't know where everybody else went, but according to this, we're down to 912 subscribers. So hmm, somebody's that's hard playing to games. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. Gosh, we were up to nine. 9.39. Now I'm really depressed. Oh, <laughs> don't let them win. Yeah, it could be. Okay. okay I'm not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> How can we lose? Oh, I well, don't know. I don't know. People... I won't say anything. My husband, who is retired from the Air Force after 27 years, he's still working, but I really want him to retire. Buy a travel trail and enjoy life. How physical is the setup? It's not Gosh, that bad. It's not physical at all. I mean... And, uh, you know, you can tell him that he can stop working for six months or a year and travel, and then he can go back to working. 
if yeah. he wants if he to work again. Yeah, he doesn't like it, uh, yeah, go back You don't to have her. to do this forever. No, you don't. And uh, In fact, it amazed us somebody who bought a, a brand new motorhome, and he used it for six months, and then he returned it. He, he went and saw everything he wanted to see, and he was done. Yeah, so I always say that to people. What's the worst that could happen? Well, we don't like it. Well, then you sell it. And you've learned a lesson, and you had a, some experiences. Well, hopefully, uh, you, you had both fun. do have to be on board about it. And I, we hear a lot from people with one spouse wants to go out on the road, and the other one's kind of dragging their heels, doesn't want to. Okay, I won't say the brand that this person bought. Who noticed when I was wearing the uh, leisure travel van shirt? He bought an excellent product, it, excellent RV, and uh, he said he didn't even use a full tank of gas. His wife said she didn't like it because they were used to a Class A, more room. He didn't even use a full tank of gas, and he turned it in. Was it a B or a C? A B. A B? Yeah. She just didn't yeah. like it because she was used to an A, and, and, and you that know, was the end of it. Th that's maybe the only way you can find it is to go out and try it. We, we also are big. Rent one. <laughs> right. Rent one. Try it before you, you buy and go through all that paperwork and only to have to sell it again if you don't like it. Rent one. So you spent, they're expensive to rent. I, I, I'll grant you that, but rent one and try it for, you know, a week, a couple of weekends. Try his, several his, different His ones. wife wanted no part of a Class B. Yeah. Like I said, he didn't even use a full tank of gas. Yeah. Uh, how did you find a mobile RV tech on the road? Dennis and Diane from Portsmouth getting our new Lexer. That's a pleasure way, beautiful pleasure way at La Mesa. That's a RV dealership next month. Well, um, the simplest way is if you Google uh, RV techs uh, or mobile RV service in the area that you happen to be in. And then I would also call any campground in the area you're in, or look if you're camp in a campground, every campground has the name of some mobile techs on a bulletin board or at the front desk. Ask them. We have had some of the best service we've ever had. Uh, from mobile techs. They come to you. They know how to fix just about everything because they've seen just about everything. Most of them have lots of parts. Um, I know they, they're, they're good at fixing slide outs. They're good at fixing air conditioners because those are the ones that they most are, are challenged with. We've used them to, uh, oh, I broke a um, City Connect water, water connector on one of our road tracks and they replaced that in 10 minutes. And if you call an RV dealer, service for service, you'll be put on wait for two, three weeks because they're so busy. But the techs, they'll get to you. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Any RV park will have the name of one or just Google it, uh, RV techs near whatever city you're in, and you'll, you'll find them. But we're big believers in techs. Mm -hmm. find them. Uh, how and where did you first meet and become an item? Oh, that was so long ago. We were 17 and 18. We were. And we met at a, at a dance. There was a roller skating ring out by the beach. And uh, on Friday and Saturday nights, they would have a dance. And so we met at the dance. We did. I had met Mike's friends with my best girlfriend at McDonald's. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then we went to the dance, and uh, that's where we were introduced. I just We just got noticed that we had a... Out of a what? super chat, and I'm trying to find it. Where'd that it super up. chat go? Here it is, yeah, RV is. Nomads. I love those super chats. i got to talk to you about some of the super chat in a minute. Uh, $10 super chat. Woo! <laughs> we get seven. Google gets three uh, from RV Nomads. We love you guys. Please give our channel, oh, it's the cheapest ad you could buy, our channel a shout out. Okay, RV Nomads 365. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Uh, hey, here's a question that I want to put to you. Maybe I... Is this... uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Really? Yeah. Answer questions. Okay. Well, all right. I, will I can't talk to you about what I was on my mind. No. You're, they're all going to be curious now. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Well, I'm looking now for to go back where I am. Uh, we'll just say hello from... And... I'm looking. I'm go trying to go back to where I was. That super chat, I had to go to the far end. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, wait, gosh, I'm way past this. So, so you got to talk while I'm doing all this oh, stuff. well, so that Super Chat there messed us up. Yeah. Usually they pop right up at the top. I've never had a Super Chat where they used it to plug their own channel, though. That's kind of, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's, I wouldn't do it. Let me just tell you that. I wouldn't do it. It's like going into, 
it's like you have a bakery. Like this is our bakery store that I've worked really hard and I make really good bread. And we've advertised it and we've worked hard to get customers. And then somebody else opens a bakery around the corner. And then they come into your bakery and start telling your people, hey, come to my bakery instead. This is rude. You know, you don't, you don't do it. Uh, how's Bo doing in the storm? Bo loves snow. He's in the RV with us right now, and he's kind of bugging me because he wants to go out and outside and play in the snow. But um, he has a past history of barking at deer and everything that's out there. Yeah. So he's got to stay in here, and as soon as we're done, he can go outside and play. Here's one from Linda. He's driving through Utah mountainous. I tow a trailer with a half ton, and that is why I ask. Um, well, it's, um, yeah, it's not terribly mountainous. I mean, Salt Lake City going up to there, um, uh, you know, in, um, you won't have any trouble. I mean, people do it all over the place. So it's not so mountainous that you can't, uh, that you can't get through. And I'm trying to, okay, now we're up to 94, 921. So I don't know what's going on with the count, but, uh. That's what we are. <laughs> hey, we want to get to 100,000. If you just tune in, go there and subscribe, please, and, uh, and tell, your, tell your friends. That would really be really great. Uh, Ford says Utah, Utah is mountainous. Utah is mountainous. We, uh, I've been in much, I think uh, Wyoming and Montana uh, are much more mountainous than Utah. Um, Utah is a big state. It's a big state, but we've done from, we've done the whole state. We've done from the north to the south. We've had you no might have been problem. busy thinking about something else. No, not, it's didn't not that. The mountains. It's not. It's not that bad. They're not steep. They're long grades. Uh, you won't have any trouble uh, pulling it. Honest to goodness, you won't. Uh, what do you think of the use of golf carts at RV parks? Well, we're not really golf cart types. Uh, the only place I've ever used a golf park would be at Fort Wilderness in uh, Disney. In Disney, because that's a huge park. And you always are rushing to get on a on a bus to go to this park or a boat to go here. So um, we did use golf carts, and then we did have a golf cart, and we enjoyed it at um, uh, Lakeside Chautauqua in on Lake Erie last. We fall. did. So I guess I, I, I can, and we will be back there. By the way, we'll be we're actually going to be lecturing uh, on um, the RV lifestyle. Uh, we're going to be there the first week in August. First week in August, we'll be talking, doing a couple of lectures there. And staying at the um, at the RV park there, and we'll probably have a golf cart there. So sure, it 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 does it is worth uh, having in a big park. Um, we don't carry a golf cart. I don't own a golf cart, and only in certain cases would I rent one where you know we really had a lot of ground we had to cover. Does that make does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that right? So uh, go for it. Uh, have you ever followed the Lewis and Clark route from Missouri to the Pacific? Yes, we have. Actually, we followed it from Pittsburgh, which is where Mary, Lewis, Mary Weather Lewis got the keelboat that he used to go down the Missouri River. He took it uh, down the Ohio, actually, uh, and to the Mississippi and then the Missouri. And um, But we have, and uh, that is a great trip. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we would, I would do that again. It was so fascinating. Uh, to read that. There's a book called Undaunted Courage, which I recommend to every RVer out there. It's the story of the of the Lewis and Clark expedition, which at the time was as significant as it was when the U.S. landed men on the moon. That's what the Lewis and Clark expedition was during its time. Just a fascinating account. And you can actually follow uh, that route, and uh, there's lots of places to learn about that expedition. But we read that book, Undaunted Courage, as uh, we traveled. And uh, I think you can get it on audiobooks, too. And I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great trip. Uh, so that was pretty good. Hey, Traveling Robert hit 100,000 this past week, and we are, like, behind him now. So. Oh, dear. Yeah. I don't know what I'm afraid to say anything, because we were up. What were we up to? We were... We were 939, and then we lost a whole bunch. So that's what happens, though. People do subscribe. What, you're kicking me. You think I'm going to say something. We're 922 now. 922. Uh. <laughs> I guess it's going to be my birthday that we had 100,000. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Chris Colley has a uh, how to get rid of squirrels and mice. A bucket, some peanut butter, and a ruler. You can make a drop bucket. Mice fall into chasing after the peanut butter. 
trick worked for him. So you'd have the ruler halfway over, mice would run over the ruler and then boom, down into the bucket. That's a pretty good idea. And there's somebody else, Nancy says she heard SOS pads, uh, put those in, in the little holes that you find underneath where mm -hmm. mice can get in. That mm -hmm. sounds like a good idea too. Do you think the transit chassis would be uh, available on all leisure travel van models? Yes, I do. It not is. All, well, no, but uh, yeah, on the Wonder models. They will not make the Unity on the chassis because it's a different, completely different configuration. The Unity will always be on the Sprinter chassis, but the Wonder is on the Ford Transit chassis, and Leisure makes, uh, makes the Wonder. Uh, the new 2020 Ford chassis are coming in shortly, and those are really going to be nice on, the, on that Ford Transit. Ford Transit's got some... Just as the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter had a major upgrade in the chassis used by RV manufacturers in 2019 model year, so will the Ford Transit chassis used by RV makers have a big upgrade in the 2020 year. So you'll hear a lot of them. Deb says, where are you headed next? Well, we're going to head to Georgia. Well, we, we were thinking about one more trip in Michigan. I don't know if we should do it or not. I don't know if we can do that either. Can we tell them about it? Or sure, you, not you can tell them. Tell them. Either? Yeah, no, you can tell them. I'll tell you. <laughs> um, one of the things, we've been reporting a couple of times in our travels this past year on how um, lake levels, Great Lakes water levels, are at their highest record levels ever. And uh, Lake Michigan in particular, uh, it's been devastating. These beautiful uh, homes on bluffs overlooking Lake Michigan have collapsed into the lake. Uh, or family cottages. Family cottages for, the families for have, generations. Yeah. And even up uh, in the uh, Traverse City area uh, of Lake Michigan, uh, up in here, um, there's a place, a little town on Lake Michigan called Leland, uh, or Leland. And Leland has this beautiful historic fishing villages on a river. And the river's gotten so high they are now literally moving all of those fishing shanties to get them away from the river. So we thought that'd make an interesting story. And we've kicked around going up and, and, uh, and covering that for you. But uh, I think we're probably going to Florida uh, and take our time to get down to Florida. We'll be right? down to Florida for spring. Yep. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, being a Michigander, what would be your favorite place to see there in Michigan? Mackinac Island, yeah, Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes, uh, Pictured Isle Rock, Royale. Pictured Rocks in uh, Munising. Those are in the Upper Peninsula, all except uh, um, all except uh, the Sleeping Bear Sand Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. Um, uh, top place if you've never been anywhere, you got to go to Pictured Rocks area near Munising, Michigan. Take a glass bottom boat tour. Uh, take a kayak tour. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Do some hiking along the. The, the area there. Uh, you can find out a lot of that. We've got a lot of videos right here on the channel. Uh, most of Lake the Lake Michigan shoreline is gorgeous. Uh, it's called America's Third Coast because it's almost as long as, uh, as California in some sense. And if you count all the Great Lakes shoreline of all the Great Lakes, but uh, uh, Lake Michigan shoreline in particular. All right. Um, Darren says, I'm sending your channel around again. You'll hit 100,000 tonight. I hope so, Darren. Hey, Darren, how are you, man? Good to see you on there. Uh, yeah, we want to get to 100,000, and uh, I promise Jennifer is going to sing. <laughs> Good luck with that. we got to sing now. No, no. You can sing. No, you got it. We're getting close, but it's... Uh, you can but, do the but yoga we're also pose. we're also running out of time here. Yeah, we have, only, I don't think we got enough time. We only got ten minutes. Yeah, it's uh, ninety nine nine twenty eight. I don't think it's going to happen. So, but hey, I appreciate everybody who who does. Uh, have you ever RV'd in another country? Truly have uh, enjoyed the energy you both have. Well, thank you, Margaret. Just Canada, Canada and the U.S. You know, um, all of us who are RVers, we tend to do kind of the same thing everybody does you know here they do Canada then they go to Alaska then they go to New Zealand or Australia and then they go to Europe uh, we have a bucket list that's still you know three feet long on places we want to see in North America uh, do you think quartzite has become too popular well I think it would have been really crowded when they have their big show Yes. I mean, I can't imagine being there during the big show. They have, they, they they have only... two shows. They have the Rock and Gem show, 
which is quartzite is known for. And then they have what they call the Big Tent, which is this wonderful RV show. Um, it isn't RVs for sale, by the way. They only have one dealer there. It's really RV accessories, the Big Tent show. And it's very popular. Yeah. And that's in January. When there's when that little town of 3,000 can swell to where everybody's camping all in the desert around up to 100, 125,000 people. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Sounds a little too crowded for me. Yeah. Uh, Chris, and you can go back in comments. Everybody has put a homemade example of the humane bucket trap for mice. And there's a, a, a link that he put up on it if you want to find that. And uh, Chris, maybe you could put that in the community tab too here on the YouTube channel where everybody they can they can see that. Uh, have you ever camped at Bay Furnace outside Munising? Yes, we have. We've camped all of the national forest and state forest along uh, east of Lake uh, East of Munising, in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. You can read a lot about our Upper Peninsula uh, favorite spots in one of our seven-day adventure guides, and there's the link to our travel books. Those are um, seven stop. We say seven day, but it's really uh, seven days to see, but it might take you a little longer to drive them all. But there's one on just on the UP that we did, and uh, we love it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, looking for an RV recommendation. My husband's really tall, and I need one with a smooth ride, some ankle issues. You, you know, it's great to do some research and ask around. My suggestion is go to an RV show and and try them all out. Uh, don't look at just stats. Go try different models, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We get that question a lot, and there are a few. This one has, I think it's 6'5", headspace, right, in it? Six I believe foot five. so. And uh, it's pretty good. Um, so it's it's good. Um I'm looking for more questions here as we kind of come through. Would you purchase a used leisure travel van? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, they hold their value really well. You ha naturally have somebody inspect it. Yeah, get an inspector. Uh, that's on any RV you get. Always get an inspector. Uh, that's great. Lots of you. Thank you, John, for the happy birthday wishes. And uh, so did Ronald. Uh, thank you. Uh, would you guys go back to a Class B van? Would we? I would, but I don't know if you ever would. You know, someday I might. I would never say never would I ever go back sure, to be. Sure, sure. No, I, I, you know. I would probably, I, I mean, I can't imagine There really ever isn't that much of a, a difference. Yeah. No, I, I don't say. I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want, but I mean, I'm spoiled. We a have B, so B much. A B plus a C, I'm happy with all of them. This is beautiful. What we have is, is gorgeous. Jeff asks, uh, do you have any comments regarding Coach House brand RV? Uh, yeah, we we like Coach House. They're made in Florida. They're very pricey, uh, upwards of two hundred thousand. They're a Class B. They have a dedicated dry shower. They're made very well. They're sold direct from the factory only. They do not go through dealers, um, and um, they in that sense they make a limited number every year, and it will take you a while to have one built. But they're very well built. We've gone through them and we've admired them greatly. They're they're really nice. They're a very nice coach. John says it's nice to have a home base, isn't it? Yeah, I I have never had a desire. In fact, what did I say to you when you first got this? That if you wanted to live in a class B full time, it would be Bo and me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I remember. <laughs> yeah, we are not full timers, although it seems like we are. We're on the road about three quarters of the year, and uh, we love it. I call it our adventure mobile. This and, is where we go off and have adventures, and then we come back to our home. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's um, it's nice to have a home. We have uh, kids in Michigan, so you know you got to see the kids and grandkids. And honestly, when we come home like this, we're home. We'll be home by a little over a week before we hit the road again. It's a it's kind of like a mini vacation. I mean, um, we are on the road a lot, but what I don't think people realize is how much work we do. You know, to do this channel. A podcast, um, a blog with daily posts, it's all the social media, uh, our newsletter, and all the books that we do. Uh, I have to shoot the video, edit the video, write the scripts. We have to record them. And then we have to travel and find all this stuff. So when we come home like this, it gives me kind of a week where I can work on creating and getting all that content lined up. And... Um, 
we, we're trying to figure out how we can manage that a little more. How to manage you? How to manage me? Yeah, yeah. Because he loves it. Yeah, I do. But I he gets do. a little crazy. Uh, um, Andrew says you need to do a video and introduce all the team that help you with your channels. Well, you you know if you're a regular here, uh, Chris is on. Uh, Chris Colley, who uh, works with um, the editing and the graphics and helps moderate. Uh, Phyllis uh, Care, who is also on here as well. Uh, here's a picture of Phyllis. She thinks. And she's, some of you in Florida. Yeah, meet her. She's in Florida right now, actually. Uh, she says we should name our rig 100K. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. If we got to 100K, we could name it that. Uh, Phyllis does is our social media director, and I don't think anybody understands how much work is involved because it's not just YouTube up here. It's Facebook, a Facebook page, a Facebook group. Uh, it's uh, Instagram. And we should tell everybody about Instagram. That's always worth uh, uh, doing a promote. Uh, we, we do a lot more on Instagram than we ever have before. So there's how you follow us on Instagram. That'll be our next goal. We want to get to 10,000 on Instagram. So let's get to 100,000 <laughs> first on YouTube and then 10,000 on Instagram. Uh, that's Phyllis. Uh, Wendy uh, does our newsletter, Wendy Boyer. Uh, Wendy happens to be my daughter. And um, she's a former journalist as well. So uh, once a journalist, always a journalist. And we have Andrew, who works um, on the blog, helps with uh, content on the blog. We have Josh and Dalton, who work in marketing for us and handle the books and uh, a lot of uh, our sponsorships and relationships with, with uh, affiliates. Uh, we have Anthony, who works with uh, search engine optimization. Do you, how much more do you want me to go on? And am I missing anybody here? I think there's seven on our team. And then um, the two of us. So uh, it's uh, it's been really fun um, to build this team. But uh, we put out a lot of content, and that's how it all works. Have you had anything break? And if so, getting the parts for it? No. The door. I thought the door easy. was broken. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, the door. The yeah, the wind caught it, and it knocked that little hinge off, or that little uh, hydraulic spring. Not a spring, a little plunger. You know, it keeps the door open. And uh, that was easy to replace, and that was it. Uh, so that was uh, that was pretty good. Uh, I just saw a Regency that was almost identical to the Leisure Travel van that was there. Any thoughts on Regency? Well, uh, it's a knockoff. You know, it's a copy of uh, of the Leisure Travel vans, and as a copy, uh, they cut some corners. I mean, it's a nice rig. It really is. They have a lot of stuff, but. Uh, I would just say, you know, the quality is not quite uh, the same as it is with the leisure. So, uh, so there you go. <laughs> we were talking about doing a, a telethon earlier, so we, until we got to a hundred thousand. And Adventures in Xanadu says, "Watch out, Jerry Lewis." <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any pets? Oh, this must be a new, a new uh, reader. And how do you copy your kids in your fur coats? Well, there's ours. There's our Bo. That's Bo. Hey, Bo. Somebody's asking about you. He's at our feet sleeping. Uh, yeah, Bo is uh, travels pretty much everywhere with him if if uh, as we go along the line, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, all right, I'm going real quick through there. Is official RV toilet paper really necessary? Doesn't regular toilet paper break up in the black tank? Not as efficiently as the regular as the official marine. Or RV grade toilet paper because they say to use the marine toilet paper. That's what we use. Yeah, and you know it's not worth. It's not worth. Around. Yeah, making a mess. Yep, yep. It is not worth it at all. Uh, gosh, is there any place to boondock in Michigan? Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Just look at our book again. Go for our, our book on uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, and you'll find lots of resources there, and you can you can look there. Uh, all right, I've got to um, run through this thing, and we've, we've got to get out of here. And I guess it's time. I'm afraid to check because, you know, somebody told me that this is happening. That it, They said if you go live and you start showing the numbers, that there will be a whole bunch of people who will unsubscribe just to mess with you. And... Uh, and that's, I think, is exactly what's happened here. Well, it just looks... Well, now we're up to 99,940. So to all of you who did subscribe tonight, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, 99,940. So we are 60 away. That means that uh, barring anything else, we should hit 
a hundred thousand tomorrow, and um, if not the next day, and then but. You know, because we didn't hit it tonight, you missed us singing the song. I was all <laughs> ready to go. 453 that's why, of you that's watching That's why some of them now. started backing off. Yeah, that's probably why we lost some subscribers. 453, according to our account, watching us live now. That is a lot. Usually these live streams by uh, the end of the day, and because people watch them in the reruns, uh, it has they usually watch by about 5,000 people, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, um, gosh, you got some great questions. In terms of parking and visiting small towns, what adjustment have you made by not having a Class B? None. This thing is only that much wider. And uh, it's just, it just is not a problem. I park it anywhere I want. I can usually get into a parking spot in, a, in any place except a parking garage because it's 10 feet high. Right? Mm hmm Um. Let's see. Onan says they're not making the uh, 3,200 watt diesel generator anymore. Have you heard of a diesel auto start that could be a replacement? It seems it's only on the LP version. Uh, ours is a 3,500 or 36, I think it is 3,600 watts, and it's LP. And I like LP. I just I like it. I feel real good about that. Um, all right. Uh, Lots of you, just so many great tips. I'd love to go back in and read all these later. I wish we, we had time um, to, uh, to really go. Uh, I have a question. Why are you so amazing and a major inspiration to me? Rhetorical. Don't answer, but thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I think what we hope is that uh, we can convi convey to you the, um, the thrill of being able to travel around. Uh, we did uh, some thinking about, well, what is it that we do? Uh, it seems like everybody has a YouTube channel that has an RV, and most of them are now very young. We could be their grandparents or great-grandparents. <laughs> we certainly are, are older than most of them. Um, I think we're probably busier than all of them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, what we're here to do is to tell stories about fun, tell fun stories about um, freedom uh, and adventure, through RV travel. That's kind of all we focus on. And we like to share our, our adventures. And, you know, if, you've, if you're a regular, you see all of our stories out here. So um, we're here to tell fun stories about RV travel. And that's, that's what we do. Uh, we're, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of ideas of stuff that we want to do. And that's what I wanted to talk about. And Jennifer says, like, now's not the time. But we got some things I, I'd like your, to get your um, input on. If you're a member of the uh, channel, if you've subscribed, there's a community tab when you go to the channel. If you click there, I'll be putting up a couple of questions that I'd love to get some of your input on over the next week or so. And, uh, and we'll talk more about it maybe next week when we are back on, uh, on live. Uh, let's see. Um, gosh, I wish I could, I could answer all of your questions. And I'm finding What's that... that? Um, <laughs> At your winter campout, would a 37-foot Class A be able to attend? Sure. Uh, just call Taquamanon Falls, and they'll plow out a spot for you. But the sites are very big, and you certainly could, could come in. We had fifth wheels there and, and big ones, and it was, it was great. Uh, uh, somebody wants us to talk about uh, full-time and part-timing. Uh, how do you do RVing and why? Well, we do it because we're having a good time. We like it. We want to see things, tell stories, have fun and freedom. Uh, why don't we full time? Because I don't want to live in the in this in small 150 of a space. square foot space. <laughs> I have a really great house that we've worked really hard uh, all of our life, and we we love our house. We do like Michigan. It's it's um, we we love every place we go, obviously, but. Uh, this has been our home our whole lives. Our, two of our kids are here and our grandkids, and this is our home base. Many of you know we also rent out. We have a rental property in Florida, and we stay there occasionally and use that as we will this spring as a, as a home base to travel around. But um, we like the diversity of having a house. And we kind of talked about this earlier in the, in the program, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but uh, that's how we travel. We're not full timers, nor will we ever be full timers unless the unless, house, unless we have to. Unless we lost the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. 
I had to post my question twice, once before you said to even post the question, traveling to Central Texas in October, October. what to expect. In October, um, nice weather. You know, it, it's still very warm in Central Texas, but n nice weather. Uh, Texas is, yeah, such a It can a be really, state. really hot in Texas. So, depend, you know, do a search on Google, what's the average temperature in the area going? But it would be very warm there still, and you would uh, you'd, you'd do great. Uh, all right, I'm looking really quick. Um, look at this. I love this when other people are helping us. Subscribe now. These guys were almost at 100K. Well, I don't think we're going to make it tonight, and I'm actually quite disappointed about it. We made it to 99,943, so that's that's pretty good. Um, but uh, we didn't get Oh, gosh, I had another super chat. I'm sorry. Why didn't I get notified of this? EC Corzilius, if you're there, 999. We loved your quartzite video, and we're going to check it out. We're the ones with the Leisure Island bed. Well, thank you. And thank you for the super chat. Uh, that's great. And look, at there's another one, Steve Biddo. I usually get notified, Steve, and this software is not working. $20. Hello from the Poconos. No ad, just hello. <laughs> thank you so much for that. And uh, usually we get notified. My goodness, there are so many questions and great questions, great comments. Kind of hate to go. Hey, here's an old familiar name, Darren Soper. Darren Soper. I'm glad to see you live. Miss you guys and uh, miss you know what the same. <laughs> we do, Darren. And I uh, hope we see you down the road. It's great to see old friends like that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, gosh, so many of you. Do you use a surge protector? If so, what brand? It's in one of our videos. Yeah, I do. They're expensive. And in the video, um, it it also shows uh, what happened, why I'm glad I had it, because I almost fried the place with a bad uh, uh, pedestal, and uh, it, caught the, it caught the problem in the pedestal for me. Uh, I'm still thinking about uh, going to Australia and rent an RV there. I think that's somebody else, Nancy, not us. No, we're not. We don't want to. Someday, maybe, but no, I, I think we've got too many things we want to see right in North America. Uh, being fellow Michiganders and knowing driving distances, would you recommend Arizona, Texas, or Florida in the winter? Um, Arizona was spectacular, although we got temperature at Quartzside in the day was about 75. This was last week. But then a cold front came through on Tuesday. And we went down to Tucson, and it was 28 degrees at night. They had to yeah. cover the cactus, <laughs> to decorate, you know, the cactus. Uh, so, so way south of south of Tampa in Florida, if you want to be warm, and um, and usually the desert is pretty nice in uh, in January, February. So give it a try. Um, like to know the differences you've noticed between the Class B and the one you're in now. Uh, Roof. There's about five Space. feet extra length. Actually, this is only one foot longer than the XL version of the Class B I had. So it's only one foot longer. Room with a slide. This is we're sitting in a slide that it goes out about two feet. But yeah, I don't I think, think it's, it's quite two. two feet. Feet. I think it's little, maybe two feet, and uh, that makes all the room in the world. It's really, it's really great. Goal zero is thousand is a battery pack, and it say, claims it can run a refrigerator. Ah, I thank you for telling me that, Mike. I don't know. I'll have to check it out, and we'll we'll see. Uh, all right, lots of you, and I'm just scrolling through this list, and we thank you so much for joining. Um, who do you think will win the best picture tonight? I don't know. Tonight is the, not the Grammys, the Emmys, the Oscars. Golden Globes, Oscars. I don't know. We don't. I, I don't. We don't usually. We don't watch that watch stuff. That. And I got another super jet. Now that one just notified me from the Northwoods RV Life. Love seeing that. Two dollars. I love these super chats, and uh, so does Google. They get they get <laughs> they get thirty percent. They get three out of every ten dollars. Um, hi from Alma, Michigan. Come on, hundred k. Yeah, I know. I'm tempted to stay on because I, we almost are there. We are as we leave. This is it. Are we. I'll be very amazed now, if you don't stay on. Uh, well, we're ninety nine nine forty three. Should I stay on? I don't know. It's uh, we're already over ten minutes over. Uh, you need fifty seven. Uh, how how will you be on your birthday trying to sell my business in RV this year at 70? Go for it. We meet people in their 80s, in their 90s that are doing <laughs> yeah. this. Uh, can you stay on the live show till we hit 100,000 tonight? Happy birthdays. What do you think? Well, 
I mean, I, don't know. Can we, we I don't started know if we can at, get that far. We started at 9.06. She's going to calculate. And now you We're just, 9.43 right now. 9.43. I don't know. That's, that's I don't think we can big, do it. I don't 57, think. 57, because we only needed 94. I don't think we can and do it. I, I'd like to, hour. John. Yeah, we've been on an hour and 10 minutes, so uh, that's a long ways to go. Robert Arnold just downloaded our book on the UP. Thanks, Robert. You'll love the UP. I guarantee it. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Phyllis says to come back on at 100K. All right, I'll tell you what. That's a great idea, Phyllis. Here's the thing. Because I actually go have to go write the newsletter for tomorrow <laughs> before I go to bed tonight, you know, and it's already 8.10. And uh, so uh, I'm going to go write the newsletter, my part of the newsletter that goes out in the morning to all of our newsletter subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, um, you should do that. Do I have a way to do that? I don't. Yeah, you go right here, and I'll bring that down. If you go, I can't bring that down. There we go. If you go right there, you can sign up for our newsletter, and uh, we send that out with lots of little inside tips. It goes out every Monday morning. So I have to go write that before it goes out in the morning, and I will do a check. And if in the next two hours. It looks like we are going to hit 100K. We will come back on live just so you can hear Jennifer sing and she can do the celebration dance. Lots of luck with that, fella. Oh, come on. <laughs> they'll, they'll get excited. Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, so that's, uh, that would, that's how you can join our newsletter. So how's that? If, we are, if we're going to do it, if we get up to like 190, if we get up to 99, 5 or 6, and it's it's ten o'clock. I'll come on live. I don't know if you want to do another question. Okay, I'm happy to do questions. I love it now that you like. We heard people have issues. I've heard people have had issues getting parts for their LTV. Have you had any issues? No, because we haven't needed any. Um, I have not. Now I know there are a lot of issues with some tariffs back a couple of months ago, but I think it's all okay. Uh, I I've not heard of any problems with. Uh, shipping between here and Canada. Well, we're down from 430 to 270 of you loyalists staying with us tonight. And with it so comes... we should have done that. Um, okay. Susan and Rodney, I wish I would have known you're so close to 100K. I would have had my sister's kid walk around the Novi RV show with the sign. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, tell him to start calling his friends. Uh, well, In fact, no, all the these RV kids. show. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe he could just call his friends. Hey, we had another super chat. This has been a big night for Google. Uh, $10 from our friend Edward Varga. Happy birthday, Mike and Jen. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mine was yesterday. Jen's is, is Wednesday. Wednesday. Abraham yeah. Lincoln's birthday. And Dreaming Outbound RV is joining the newsletter. I, I don't say enough about, you know, all these other things that we're doing, like, um, you know, like the, uh, like the newsletter. And then uh, also, I'm always uh, forgetting to tell people that we're on Instagram. And we've been doing more and more things on Instagram. So if if you uh, have Instagram, you can follow us there. That's our handle. And uh, we've been put sharing much more of our life on it. And uh, it, we really enjoy Instagram. It's really fun. And uh, that's because we have Phyllis on our team. And Phyllis makes everything look really good. So uh, that's Instagram. And uh, I'm almost caught up. Uh, I am. I'm totally caught up. I don't think I've missed any other questions. Probably have some. Uh, have you ever been to Gary, Indiana? Uh, yes, we've gone through Gary, Indiana. I think we had lunch there once. Um, there's some nice campgrounds just east of Gary, Indiana, near the newest national park, or the second newest national park, which is now the uh, Indiana Dunes National Park. And uh, so there's lots of them there. You can just do a search, campgrounds, Indiana Dunes. That's just east of Gary, Indiana, not too far. There we go. Well... We have gone eight. It's eight fifteen. It is just last, about eight fifteen. Last check. Here's where we are. We are. Oh my gosh, we're getting closer. It's ninety nine nine forty eight. Fifty two away. So, here's the thing. We're, we'll come back on if at if it looks like we're going to make it. If if it's ten ten fifteen, and we're still twenty away, uh, we'll just. Um, Go to, bed, go to bed sobbing if we didn't make it. <laughs> but if we did make it, we'll come back on and thank you all. And we thank you all anyway. Even if 
even if we lose a whole bunch, we're here for you. And, um, and we love to get your suggestions and what you'd like us to tell stories about, where you'd like us to go. And um, I hope you're having as much fun with the RV lifestyle as we are. Right? That's true. So on behalf of Bo, who wants to say goodnight. Bo wants to go what? out and play in the he snow. He wants to go play in the snow, but he's sleeping now. So Bo's uh, at he our tends face. to get up at dawn and go to bed when it gets dark. He does. He's smart, smart. And uh, we're, uh, we're going to have some fun. Thank you guys for lots of great questions. Thanks for kind of having, sharing the excitement with us of, uh, of getting close to that 100,000 mark. And um, we're, we're really are excited for that. Uh, um, and let's see, you need a better thumbnail for that 100K, but I don't want to see, I don't want to see R in a swimsuit. Please no. What's that? I don't know. I don't know what that means either. And we got another super chat. Look at they keep coming on. Maybe we should just do super chats. Heck with the 100K. <laughs> keep sending money. This is from. T <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This is from TLR Varden. Ten dollars. New subscriber. You two are the best. Oh, thank you. Uh, you are the best. No, you are. No, you. You are. <laughs> uh, all right. Our moderators are say, "Come on, we're going." Uh, Lee H says, I'm unsubscribing and subscribe to get you 100 No, it doesn't work, Lee. It doesn't work that way. When you unsubscribe, it takes away. But thank you for subscribing. And uh, thank you, Chris Colley, again, for being with us. Uh, thank you, uh, Phyllis uh, Kerr, for moderating. And if, check around. I'll tell you what. We will send a note out via... Uh, I don't know how we can... talk to Phyllis on. later. Yeah, Phyllis, I don't know how we get the word out if we're going to go on at 10, but... Uh, if we're close at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll be back on live. If not, um, we'll just share it in the, the newsletter tomorrow. But there we're, you go. we're close. We're really close. One last check, and oh, then I'm out of here. Maybe Chris hasn't had dinner yet. Let the, okay. He might have plans for his evening. 99,954. That's where we are. Wow. So 66 away. No, that's not right. No. 46 away. Yeah. That's great. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gone. We're out of here. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you uh, down the road, maybe once more tonight around 10. But if not, for sure, we'll be back with another Ask Us Anything live next Sunday night from wherever we happen to be. And we will also um, have, uh, uh, let's see, we've got our podcast this Wednesday. And we've got another video on Arizona. Really, really fun good. one next, next, like Saturday next Saturdays. Arizona. Make sure you see the Arizona one we just did on Quartzsite. Uh, okay, one last question. Um, what television station were you on in Michigan? We grew up in Flint. I was on WDIV, Channel 4. And if you've been and around a long time. did you work at? And I work, I've worked at WJR. I've worked at WXYT. I've worked at WWBC in Bay City. WB, WSGW. No, WKNX in Saginaw. But um, Channel 4, the NBC station in Detroit, where I was for years. I was Mike Wendland in the I-Team. I was an investigative reporter there for... Covering for, Hoffa. For like 18 years. It was a long time. Uh, Neil got his wife to subscribe. Thank you, Neil. Um, and Jeff says he thinks that people were unsubscribing to resubscribe. No, it doesn't work that way. When you unsubscribe, it takes one away. So I think so, Jeff's right. Yeah, he is. They uh, met well. Okay, last check, and then I'm going to say goodbye. Here it is. Last check. And uh, it is uh, 99,900. I can't see that. Read that. 956. 956. So two more. 44 away. That's it. We might make it at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll see you then. We're going to give it a quick try. Uh, go get your work done. Uh, yeah, got to go get the newsletter written. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll come back on live if we're close, okay? Meantime, you can all help by spreading the word. Get your friends and relatives to sign up. And stay signed up. Don't, don't sign up and then unsubscribe. We love you guys. We'll see you down the road. Happy.